Hi guys and welcome back to my channel for Bookmas Day 7. My dog is coming. Hey, come here. Ah, come say hi. Hi. Oh, you're so cute. Don't move the tripod, okay? <laughs> do you want to go down or do you want to stay with me? No, he wants to stay with me. Okay, that's weird. My name is Franny and today I'm going to share with you all the surprises and disappointments of 2020. I'm going to alternate between the two and I'm going to start with the disappointments and then move on to the surprises. You'll see as we go on. My first disappointment of 2020 was, no surprise, King of Crows by Liba Braid. This is the fourth book in the Diviner series. I've talked about it already too much so I, I don't want to say anything else. It was just a mess ending to the Diviners series. A surprise was my lesbian experience with Loneliness by Kami Nagata. I've also talked about this book in my Fuck 2020 book tag. I will leave it linked in the description down below so I'm not gonna say too much about it. Just know that it's a queer graphic memoir. It was very intense and honest and I really loved it. My next disappointment was You Brought Me the Ocean by Alex Sanchez and illustrated by Julie Marot. This is a graphic novel where the main character discovers that he has superpowers, so it's that kind of graphic novel, that genre, and it really disappointed me because it was gorgeously illustrated and that's all thanks to Julie Marot and that's why I finished it and I was able to kind of enjoy it but at the same time it was such a disappointment because it was supposed to be sure about this boy who finds out that he has superpowers but also about this interracial queer relationship with a boy that he meets and that he becomes friends with but it wasn't really at all about that and even the plot was kind of predictable and boring, the resolution was predictable and boring, so in the end it was a bit of a disappointment. And honestly, the only good thing about it were the illustrations. <laughs> A surprise was Little and Lion by Brandy Colbert. This is the first book I've ever read, actually listened to, but still read by Brandy Colbert. And I gotta say, I really enjoyed it. And I can't wait to read the other books that Brandy Colbert has written because it was so good. I loved how the relationships were done and built. I loved that there was an interracial family with stepsisters, the brothers, the main character is bisexual and I think that there was a good representation of bisexuality and also her brother suffered from mental health issues and also that was very well portrayed at least that's what I think. The conflicts and the dynamics were very natural and they seemed real and I felt involved in the characters' lives and I overall I just really really loved listening to the audiobook and the story. It was just, it was so good. Another disappointment was Verity by Colleen Hoover. I've really loved Colleen Hoover's books in the past. I hadn't read anything by her in four years maybe, something like that. And I gotta say, this was such a huge disappointment because it's supposed to be like a thriller mystery kind of thing with a weird vibe and weird shit went down. It's like Colleen Hoover was saying, hey, how can I make this book more gruesome and traumatic and what can I think of that would really shock the reader? Let's do that. And it was just for the sake of being disgusting I think and then the resolution at the end which is supposed to be the huge reveal that nobody was expecting sure I guess I wasn't expecting it but while I was listening to it because again I listened to the audiobook it just felt such a cop out to kind of excuse what she had written before in a way really didn't work for me and uh, it was such a disappointment. Again, moving on to a surprise, I'm kind of going in chronological order, so I've already talked about this book in a bunch of videos I think at this point, but Heartstopper by Alice Oseman, this is such a 
queer joy. I loved those graphic novels. I love the first three volumes that are out. They're so adorable and cute and Nick and Charlie are just adorable and cute and I love her stopper. Last disappointment of the year is The Guest List by Lucy Foley. I was so surprised that I was disappointed because I think I've heard people just raving about it or saying that it's such a good thriller and honestly I disliked it so much. The only reason I went through with it and that I actually got to the ending of the story is that there was such a good Irish narrator, a woman that was spectacular and I wanted to keep listening to her voice, like that's the only thing that brought me to the end of that book, otherwise I would have dimmed it because it was just bad. You know, the mystery wasn't really there because there's like a build-up to the mystery that lasts for the whole book. Let's say that the book is nine hours long, the build-up was kind of about to be done at the eighth hour of the audiobook and that's way too late way too late. It was just a bunch of guys obsessed with their years at a boarding school that was absolutely sick and not normal. It was about this wedding that is supposed to take place in this secluded isle near the coast of Ireland, near Dublin, and I've heard people say, yeah, you have a bunch of characters being stuck on the island, but they're not really stuck on the island because they're there for the wedding. It doesn't matter that there's a storm that doesn't allow them to go back to Dublin. There's a wedding. Why would they leave the wedding if nothing has happened yet? Because only one thing happened and it was 30 minutes maybe before the end of the book in nine hours. It was just boring, okay? And the last surprise of 2020 was, again, I've talked about this, Cat's Cafe by Matt Tarpley. I had the arc from Negali. I requested it without really knowing much about Cat's Cafe. I just thought that it was cute, it looked cute, it sounded cute. I requested it and I was approved, but when I started reading it, I just fell in love with how heartwarming and hopeful it was and how some characters experience different kinds of mental health issues, anxiety, depression, so on and so forth, and you have the other characters that come together to help them. So some strips are a bit darker and sad and actually tough to read because your heart is just squeezing so tight and aching for these tiny animals that are suffering so much and then you have strips that are hopeful and that express togetherness and love and friendship and they were just so beautiful and it's what I needed this year. It was such a nice surprise. I absolutely adored it. It's one of my favorite books of the year, if I have to be honest, if ever. And now I'm following Cat's Cafe on Instagram as well. And I really encourage you to do the same because that Instagram account is so sweet and will definitely, definitely bring some light and joy and warmth in your life if you do follow it. So this was it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Please like, subscribe and comment down below what were your disappointments and surprises of 2020 because I would love to know. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with Vlogmas Day 8. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow. Warm hugs!